Hello, welcome to my channel, Node Spaghetti. My name is Joseph. This is the first video in a series where I will be making this cute octopus character in Blender 2.81. I've been building Blender 2.81 from source, so at the time of this recording it's still in development. There will be a few bugs. Be aware that many of the bugs that you'll notice have been fixed by the time Blender 2.81 is officially released. I want to say a special thank you to anybody watching this because this is my first video on this channel. Please leave some feedback in the comments section so that I can continue to improve what I'm doing. This character was made directly from scratch in Blender with no concept design or even much thought behind it. So this first session was really just about getting the shape down or sculpting so that I could refine the shape further while sculpting it. My process here is to use lots of simple primitive objects and then use the bool tool add-on to combine them together. If I was just modeling the octopus directly, of course I wouldn't do it this way. But because of awesome features like voxel remesh, quadruflow remesh, and in topo, you don't really have to have very clean geometry when starting a sculpt in Blender. At this point in the sculpt, she looks so much more like a spider than she does an octopus. It creeps me out. Don't worry, I promise she won't look like a spider in the end. You saw in the intro what it's supposed to look like. And this just goes to show how, how basic you can be with the base mesh, because you can always just fix things and improve them as you iterate on them. Having an iterative workflow is essential to working quickly and to working efficiently. This octopus was originally supposed to be a quick weekend project, just for fun. But it turns out that octopuses have eight tentacles, so it ended up taking me close to 30 hours to do. You'll see all of my mistakes throughout this video series, because I wanted to include everything that went into the making of. I think there's a lot you can learn by watching people make mistakes and fail and go back and fix them. I don't see a lot of that in other people's art process videos, so I don't know if I just make more mistakes than them, or if they're carefully rehearsing and editing and planning out what they do before they go about doing it. But um, since I'm not seeing anybody else do it, I'm going to try it, and maybe people will like it. So let me know what you think about this in the comments beneath the video. Right here, I'm finishing up the basic shape. I'm getting that little part in the middle to try to look like the webbing between the octopus's tentacles. It also helps to make sure the boolean goes, goes clean, because you have to make sure that all the different parts are touching each other and colliding, or else there'll be weird artifacts or the boolean just won't work. So at this point, the basic shape is just about done. I'm using bool tool to automatically do a union boolean. And then I run it through a quick voxel remesh, which takes almost no time at all. And the quadruflow remesh actually takes a lot longer than it looks like on your screen. I sped it up so that you wouldn't have to wait for it. Right here, I'm cleaning up the quadruflow remesh. As you can see, there's some holes in the center that were left there due to a bug in the symmetry feature at the time. That has been fixed. The other artifacts that you can see here are simply due to my incompetence using the boolean add-on, or a boolean modifier. It was easy to fix though, so I didn't bother to go back and do it over. In fact, you could really just select all of the offending faces and press the F key to make a face, uh, and that'll turn it all into a giant ingon. You can open up the sculpt tools and enable Dintapo and just brush over it really quickly, and it'll triangulate everything for you. I don't know why I didn't do that. I guess I just wanted to waste your time and mine. <laughs> I actually had intended to use the multi-resolution modifier to have a really detailed sculpt, but the basic shape at this point was just not very good, so I ended up abandoning that idea and, and using the voxel remesh in lieu of Dintapo, which is what I usually use. But this is a new feature, and I just wanted to try it out. If there's anything you see in the video that you'd like to have a more careful explanation for, just leave a comment, and I might make a quick tip video or I'll just explain it to you in the comments. Now at this point, I finished the base mesh and I'm starting to sculpt the character. Whenever I sculpt a character, the first thing I try to do is get the overall shape and the silhouette to be correct. If you don't get the overall shape and the silhouette correct, there's no point in adding details because they're just going to be fundamentally wrong, and you'll have to delete them and start over and fix the shape before you can actually proceed. So I've started to get into the habit of doing that first, because I've learned, I've learned that the hard way so many times. Right here, what I'm doing is I'm trying to get the proportions of the tentacles correct relative to the body, trying to get them all to be the same length as each other and the right length, trying to get them to be the right distance between each other and apart from each other, 
and the right width. I'll be making quite a few more of these art character making of videos. I'll be doing some environments too. And I'll probably be making an environment for this octopus because it's just been a lot of fun to work on and I think she deserves a little bit more than a blank blue background. None of these process videos are going to have any music playing behind them. Whenever I watch uh, an art making a video that has music playing, I mute it anyways. You've got better taste in music than I do, so feel free to play your own music over it in the background. However, I will be doing voiceovers for these videos, explaining what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. And feel free to mute me too. There's probably going to be sections of the video where there's not much to say, so I'll be finding plenty of other things to talk about in between. Maybe I'll talk about my pipeline, or why I like Blender, or the kinds of artistic things I'm interested in. Maybe I'll talk about how to stay motivated or how to be productive. I don't know yet. Um, I'm, I'm working on a list right now of things that are worth talking about, and I'm interested in hearing feedback about whether that's a good idea to combine with these sort of making of videos. I have a lot of other plans for this channel, too. For example, I'm writing an add-on for Blender, and I'll be using this octopus to demonstrate my new add-on, which improves Blender's rigging tools. That's still a little ways away, though. After that, I'll be making a rigging tutorial series where I take a human character and rig it in such a way that it can perform all of the same flexible actions that a human, uh, an athletic, flexible human can do, like a gymnast or a dancer. The reason why I've chosen this goal for the series is because if the rig is capable of doing what the most flexible athletic human is capable of doing, it's also capable of doing anything that an ordinary person can do, someone that isn't quite so athletic. Animators usually want their rigs to be capable of doing more than the character has to anyways, in case they want to push a pose or make it a little bit more dynamic, more exaggerated. So it helps to be able to produce extremely flexible rigs, even if you aren't rigging an extremely flexible character. I'll also be doing a series on producing individual reusable rigging components called Riggy Bits. I'm also thinking about making a Python series where I read through the code of various different Blender add-ons, explain how it works and why it works the way it does, why it's done the way it's done, maybe even finding ways to improve on it, and of course I'll be pulling out all of the useful, interesting, Pythonic bits of code that I can put into my own add-ons, and you can use in your add-ons, too. That series will take a lot of time, but I stand to learn so much from doing it that I'm really interested in trying it out. Um, but I can't promise that it will produce any frequent uploads. I'm also planning on making a series of miscellaneous videos with tips and tricks for all sorts of different things. Modeling, UVing, pipeline, producing shader nodes, um, using open source software, Maybe even building and, and editing and patching Blender at some point. Although that's something I'm still learning myself. I'm also interested in doing videos about other software packages, but some of them are a little bit more expensive than I can afford at the moment. I do use Marvelous Designer, and I'll be using that in some of the character workflow videos in the future. I've got a lot of ideas about the direction of this channel, so just let me know what you think is the most interesting out of all of that. My goal for this channel isn't to produce a bunch of beginner-friendly tutorials. There's a million channels out there that can teach you how to make a donut. Instead, what I want to do is produce videos that are short, sweet, and to the point, so that intermediate and advanced artists can come to them and learn something that they didn't get from the beginner-centered tutorials. What a lot of those beginner tutorials really fail to present is best workflow practices for an artist in a studio, and for large-scale projects. Very often, they're small, single-person projects, and there, there isn't a lot of information on the internet about how to produce animation with a team. So in this channel, I won't be trying to do any stuff that's flashy or showy. Instead, these videos are going to get right to the point and not waste any of your time. Hopefully, you'll be able to find information here that you can't find anywhere else, presented so clearly that you'll be able to understand it the first time. I understand that this is a pretty lofty goal, so I hope you'll give me a lot of feedback and tell me how I can improve and, and produce consistently quality content. And let me know if I'm wasting your time and stuff.
Don't be afraid to be harsh with your feedback. Alright, I'm done talking about myself. Let's get back to the sculpt. Right here I'm using the Pose Brush, which is brand new to Blender 2.81, and it's just perfect for the little edits I was doing to the angle of the tentacles. I'll be moving on to creating the octopus's mouth. At first I didn't really have any idea how I was going to manage this. I was still thinking of something like a squid or a cuttlefish or a blooper from a Mario game. And octopuses actually have a mouth, it's like a beak, underneath in that part between all their tentacles. The whole thing makes me feel uncomfortable, but I had to make it anyways, and so you're going to have to watch me make it. This was kind of a fun challenge from a character design perspective, because I want this character to be expressive and appealing and fun, but she doesn't have a mouth if you're looking at her face. The beak actually ends up being kind of cute, but you have to sort of rotate the view to see underneath her, which is kind of weird. So that's the end of the first session. In the next session, I'll be refining the shape of the tentacles and beginning the process of retopologizing the octopus. And with that, I want to say another special thank you for watching my video. I hope you'll watch the next one and continue watching the series as I make it. Um, and if you'd like to do that, please subscribe to my channel. Maybe even ring the little bell if you're interested, but I won't beg for that. Thank you.